Hello, welcome to HCR Basic Training Course Chapter 3.1. In this chapter, you will learn about graphic user interface of programming screen. I will let you know how to add programming icons, how to manage program tree, how to move, copy and paste programming elements and how to handle program variables. Let's click the programming menu to change the screen. On the programming screen, you can see small 3D simulation screen. You can see your robot and its motion, TCP, the path of your current program, safety and tool boundaries when programmin is running or stoked. There are three programming tabs on the screen, first is main program tab, second one is for sub program, and last one is for thread program. You can change the programming tab by clicking these tab icons. In sub program tab, you can make a new sub program for current main program by loading other program files or templates. If you click the checkbox named Keep Subprogram, you can keep the original parameters of subprograms even if you change the parameters and data of your subprogram in the main programming tab. In Thread Program tab, you can add two kinds of thread programs for main program. Thread Program executes specified program with main program at the same time without any interruption. Thread Program runs in the background and affects main program as you set. We will learn about sub and thread program in next chapter. Let's click the main program tab and see detail about main program tab. In this main program tab, you can see a section for frequent command icons in a row. There are seven icons in this section. If you want to see all command icons, Click command button in purple color. After you click the button, you can see all command icons on the screen. There are 11 basic command icons and 4 advanced command icons in the command section. Let's click variables button on the screen to start management of program variables. In this variable section, you can add or delete program variables. Program variable is dependent variable on current main program only. Click the add button to add a new program variable. Rodi offers five kinds of variables as you can see in Dropbox and I will let you know about features of each type. Let's make a number type variable first. After we create number type variable, you can see your new variable on the list. Click the name field and change the name of this variable as you want. If you want to change the initial value of this variable, click the value field and type the initial value for this variable. Let's make a string type variable. After we create string type variable, you can see your new variable on the list. Click the name field and change the name of this variable as you want. If you want to change the initial value of this variable, Click the value field and type the initial value for this variable. Let's make a joint type variable. After we create joint type variable, you can see your new variable on the list. Click the name field and change the name of this variable as you want. 
You can see a array which contains each joint angle data. If you click the array field, you can activate manual control mode and move your robot. Let's move your robot and click OK button, please remember each joint angle data. After you click OK button, each joint angle data is saved in this variable array. We can apply this joint type variable when we use JTYPE movement command. Let's make a position type variable. After we create position type variable, you can see your new variable on the list. Click the name field and change the name of this variable as you want. You can see an array which contains position data of your TCP. If you click the array field, you can activate manual control mode and move your robot. Let's move your robot and click OK button, please remember position data. After you click OK button, TCP position data is saved in this variable array. We can apply this position type variable when we use LRA or C type movement command. Let's make a boolean type variable. After we create position type variable, you can see your new variable on the list. Click the name field and change the name of this variable as you want. If you click the value field and choose one of two answers. After you manage the program variables, please click apply button to save the changes. On variable monitoring tab, you can see the status of variables in real time when the program is running. Now, let's look into buttons on the bottom of screen. You can save your program file as a template and template does not contain detail parameters. We can use template when we need only program tree and sequence. If you click the file button, you can save or load program files and also create a new program file. If you want to save any changes of your program, please click apply button. There is a button which activates unlimited loop for your main program. And also play and step play and stop button for your program. There is a speed gauge and you can adjust entire program running speed by dragging this gauge lever. Now, let's look into program element screen. For the first place, there is a mandatory program element named initialize. If you click the initialize command, you can see a subtree for this command and also description for this command on the screen. You can add several commands which shall be repeated in the subtree when the initialize command is activated. There are two checkbox for this initialize command. If you activate upper one, Rody will repeatedly execute program commands in the initialize tree for every loop of main program. If you activate lower one, Rody will execute initialize or the command just right side of the initialize even if you click a command at the middle of program sequence. Let's add program commands on this screen. You just need to click once to add a new command on your program as you can see. There are several commands which have subtree for them like if, loop, switch command. You can open the subtree by clicking the command icon in the main program tree again. If you want to close the subtree, just click the command icon again. If you click any command icon on the main program tree, it turns deep sky blue color. You can see a small red triangle on each command icon. This red triangle means the command has no detail data so you need to teach or input appropriate data for that command.
If you want to add a new command between these two J movement command, please click the left one and click the new command on the command section. After you do like this, a new command will be created between two movement command. Let's do it again in the same way, click J movement command and add your new command at just right side of that J movement. Also, Rody offers undo and redo button to help you to recover your small mistakes. Adding new command for each subprogram tree is also very simple in Rody. Let's add if command and add else if trees for this exercise. In this case, you can see three subtrees for one if command. If you click each subtree, you can activate and be ready to add commands for each tree. Click any subtree and let's add commands like me. As you can see in the screen, activated subtree changes color and it's darker than the activated one. So, click the subtree to activate first and then you can add commands in selected subtree. Let's go to next step. Rody offers edit function for your convenience. Click the edit button to activate this function. When this function is activated, you can select multiple commands at the same time and copy or delete or move them as you want. The most important thing you have to remember for this edit function is selecting sequence. Let's see simple example on the screen. I added J movement and if and loop command in a row. Then, I will activate edit function and copy these three command and paste into the folder. Please focus on the clicking sequence and small numbers of left corner for each selected commands. After I click copy and paste button, we can see copied commands but the sequence is different from original one. The new sequence is as same as clicking sequence of edit function. So, you need to focus on selecting sequence to prevent unexpected changes and disorder. Let's erase all commands and go to the next step. Rody offers batch apply functions also. By using this function, you can change features of same kind commands by one effort. Select same type commands and click batch apply button to use this function. And you can combine several selected commands into a folder by one effort. You can also move selected command easily by using left and right button. Rody offers tree function to see total program architecture and tree at a glance. If you want to see this, just click the tree icon.
Let's go to next step. I will make a simple program to show how the program runs according to integrated subtrees and the difference between two options of initialize command. Please make a program for your practice like me. As you can see in this program, because of loop command for 5 times, wait command which is inside the subtree of loop command is executed 5 times. Please focus on the time bar subtree when the program is running. When the commands inside the subtree is executed and finished, the subtree is automatically closed and time bar goes to the next command. Now, let's see the difference between two options of initialize command. Please add a wait command inside the subtree of initialize command. Activate the first option of initialize first and click apply button to save changes. If you click the command element at the middle or end of this program and play button, program starts at selected element, not initialize or first command of this program. After the first loop is finished, initialize command will be executed because of first option and unlimited play option as you activated. Let's stop the program and activate both options of initialize command. Click apply button and select the last command of program tree. At this time, even if click the last one of this program, Rody ignores the last wait command and execute the first command of this program. And because there is a command at the initialize tree, you can see the time bar is at the subtree of initialize command. Let's stop this program and deactivate the first option of initialize function. And then, click the apply button and second command of this tree and play to see how Rody works. At this time, even if you clicked the second one of this program, Rody ignores your choice again and execute the first command of initialize command for one time. But we need to focus on the time bar of the second and third cycle. Because we deactivated the first option of initialize command, even if unlimited loop function is activated, Rody will not execute the initialize command for second and third cycle. These two options are useful when you want to reduce errors because of wrong start point or not refreshed signal status. In conclusion, if you activate first option, Rody will execute the commands inside the initialize tree for every play cycle. If you activate second option, Rody will execute the command inside the initialize tree for the first loop or execute the first command if there is no command inside the initialize tree. Let's go to final step of this chapter. If you click the simulation button of small 3D screen, you can play your program without robot motion. In this way, you can prevent unexpected motion of robot before real accident occurs. You need to click apply button to save this change before program runs. You can easily ignore your commands by clicking skip icon at the screen. This function will help you to reduce the time for partial verification of your program.
All right. You've finished this chapter. Thank you for your valuable time. We will learn about basic movement command next time. See you next time.